What if I told you that the biggest change in SBIR or STCR funding in decades is right around the corner? And if you don't get ahead of it now, you'll miss out on millions of dollars in free money for your startup. That's right, this game-changing reauthorization bill could double the funding agencies set aside for innovators like you, making SBIR funding permanent and bringing new perks that can rocket your tech from the lab to market faster than ever before. But, but there's a catch. catch. The clock is ticking, and these programs could disappear if Congress doesn't act by September of 2025. So if you want to crush your SBIR strategy this year and position yourself to win big in the new funding landscape, you need to watch this video because I'm breaking down the eight critical things every founder must know before the bill becomes the law. So don't get left behind and let's dive right in. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Stacey Chin, a professional federal grants and contracting consultant who has helped to raise over $40 million of non-dilutive funding for startups developing innovations in healthcare, climate, and defense. You can think about the SBIR and STTR programs as the secret sauce that's been fueling America's most innovative startups since the 1980s. And these federal programs throw serious non-dilutive cash, meaning free money, to small businesses ready to, to tackle breakthrough research and development. Agencies like the NIH, the NSF, the DOD, and the DOD open their checkbooks to help founders turn wild ideas into real tech. So now, why are we talking about this Reauthorization Act? Well, here's the catch. These programs aren't on autopilot, but rather their legal permission to operate expires on September 30th, 2025. Without a fresh green light from Congress, that funding tab could shut off, leaving startups high and dry. That looming deadline has everyone nervously watching Capitol Hill because no one wants to lose this crucial money pipeline. So I know you're wondering who's leading the charge. Enter Senators Edward Markey and Representative Nita Velasquez, the bipartisan champions pushing the SBIR and STTR Reauthorization Act of 2025. And they're backed by small business advocates and federal agencies who know that the SBIR and STTR is a powerhouse for American innovations and economic growth. And here's the juicy part. This this bill isn't just about keeping the lights on. It's about supercharging the entire program. Imagine permanently locking in funding, doubling agency set aside to 7% for SBIRs and 1% for STTRs, and unlocking nearly $12 billion a year for startups nationwide. Plus, they want to roll out commercialization officers to help your tech jump from lab to market, tightening security around foreign influence, boosting transparency transparency, and fast-tracking breakthrough technologies. So what does all this mean for you? Buckle up, because here are the eight game-changing things every founder must need to know about the upcoming SBIR and STTR changes. Starting with number one, the SBIR and STTR programs may become permanent for the long haul. For the first time ever, the SBIR and STTR programs could be permanent. No more last-minute authorization acts are needed ever again. And this gives founders a stable predictive source of non-dilutive capital. With 6,000 phase ones awarded every year across 11 agencies, this change could allow for long-term growth and planning. If this act passes, founders should be thinking about their SBIR pipeline like a product roadmap, multi-year, multi-phase, and even multi-agency. Two, more funding could be available than ever before. The bill proposes increasing the SBIR set aside from 3.2% to 7% and SBIR from 0.45% to 1% of the agency's R&D federal budgets. That could result in billions of dollars in more in potential grant funding, especially from large agencies like the DOD, NIH, and DOE. For example, NIH's SBIR and STTR budgets topped at $1.3 billion in the 2023 fiscal year. Founders should proactively research agency growth areas and prioritize prioritize submissions where funding might soon expand. Three, a new microgrant could make it easier to get started in the program. A new phase 1A pilot would offer a $40,000 award for a two-page application designed for very early stage tech validation. And this could lower the barrier for entry for startups testing new ideas. While not yet active in every agency, founders should prepare a short but compelling summaries of their tech in anticipation for future pilots, especially for the 
the NSF and DOE. Four, proposal limits will reward targeted applications. The new bill proposes to cap submissions to three per solicitations and 25 per company per year. While still flexible, this change encourages more selective strategic proposals. Founders should avoid the shotgun approach and instead focus on writing fewer higher quality applications tailored to the mission and the goals for each agency. Five, founders must disclose foreign investors and affiliations. To increase national security, the bill tightens oversight on foreign ownership and influence. And this could impact companies with international VC ties or research collaborators. So founders should prepare by reviewing their cap table, IP licenses, and affiliations now before submission and be ready to clearly explain their ownership and funding structure. Six, fixed budgets mean you must manage your money smarter. Agencies will be required to issue more fixed price contracts, reducing cost reimbursement awards, and so forth. And while this simplifies accounting for agencies, this means startups need to accurately estimate costs and stick to budgets. So founders should be thinking in milestones and outcomes and to ensure that their internal financing tracking systems are strong, even at the earliest stages. Seven, the proposed breakthrough track can offer bigger awards if you can match the funds. This bill aims to expand the DOD's breakthrough programs, awarding up to $30 million with one-on-one -on -one private capital. This is ideal for dual-use tech, military plus commercial, and rewards big ideas with big checks, but only if you got co-investors. So founders should be building these relationships early on to qualify for this funding path. And finally, eight, you can now get help scaling your technology even after you get the grant. Every SBIR agency will be required to have a commercialization officer to help grantees find customers, partners, and follow up funding. This could be a huge game changer because today, only 25% of phase two companies fully commercialize. So founders should engage with these officers like business mentors or business development leads, sharing their vision, their traction, and go-to-market needs early on in this process. So at the end, end of the day, here's the bottom line. The SBIR and STTR Reauthorization Act is poised to reshape the startup funding landscape. And if it passes, this means bigger budgets, clearer rules, and stronger support to turn your ideas into market-ready products. But with great opportunity comes new challenges. You'll have to get smarter about strategy, tighten up your financials, and build relationships early on, especially with investors and agency commercialization teams. So what does that mean for you founders? Don't wait for the bill to pass. Start planning now as if these changes are coming. Get your tech story sharp, streamline your proposals, and position yourself to ride this way for growth. Because when the program supercharges, the stars that prepare today will be the ones winning the proposals tomorrow. If you found any of these tips helpful, if you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel, that so you can learn new ways to keep your equity throughout your fundraising journey. And don't forget to check out our website at keepyourequity.co, where you can find more resources, templates, and advice of how you can secure non-dilutive funding. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you in a video very soon.